We do it out of self-preservation, trying to maintain our self-confidence. And I thought that was so interesting because if you really think about it, making excuses is the exact reason why you don't have more confidence in being successful with something. It's a story, and this is exactly what I shared with our Fitness Fix clients this week. Most of our excuses are stories that we are telling ourselves that we inherently believe to be true. And as we continue to make these excuses, as we continue to perpetuate this cycle of excuses, we're only making those stories a reality. Let's link up with Krista on The Fix. She's a wellness coach with a focus on mental well-being and physical strength. What's going on, Fix listeners? Welcome back to our latest episode of The Fix Podcast. I'm your host, Krista Huber, and today I've got a quick solo episode for everybody out there. If you are brand new to the show, welcome. So happy to have you here. If you're a longtime listener, you know I have an extra soft spot for you guys. So appreciative of the continued support of the show. I haven't done this on a consistent basis, but something that makes a really big difference for this podcast and it getting recommended to other people and just helping us really spread the word on all things fitness fix related nutrition and fitness is leaving a review. So you're going to start to hear me over the course of the next few episodes. We're going to make it a regular thing where shameless plug, share the show, subscribe to the show, but more specifically, leave a review. If you've been listening to this for a while, you feel like you get value out of this content, it does truly go a long way the more reviews we have of the podcast. So if you have a couple minutes, if you're out for a walk right now, like I know many of you tend to do, or if you're in your car listening to the show, wait to do it till you get out of the car. But if you're out for a walk, open up your phone, go to the show, wherever you're listening to it, whether it's on Apple, Spotify, I know a lot of you out there do listen on Apple podcasts, scroll all the way to the bottom of this episode, or if you're on the main page of the show, scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll see a bunch of stars. At those stars, please leave it a five-star rating or review. And if you have any comments on why you love the show, would super, super appreciate those too. So with that said, let's get right into this one. It's going to be a quick one because we are hitting on a big topic that's been a focus among Fitness Fix clients over the course of the last week or so. We did a deep dive on this exact topic, literally troubleshooting inside of our one-on-one program of the Fitness Fix, all the things that the stories that we tell ourselves around excuses we have in trying to reach our fitness and our nutrition goals. So in reflecting on some of the conversations and the real just raw vulnerability that so many of our clients shared, I felt, hey, there's a lot of value in this that other people should be able to have access to. And I'm going to make a little spin on it in a quick podcast episode, just kind of summarize some of the takeaways I had in listening to our clients and their biggest challenges, but also thinking about potential clients, things you guys are telling me in the DMs on Instagram, other things I'm seeing on social media about excuses. And it's a topic that I feel like we kind of dance around and skirt around sometimes because it makes us uncomfortable. And guess what? It makes us uncomfortable because that's why we come up with excuses in the first place. So in collecting my thoughts and getting ready for this episode and kind of prepping everything, I did a quick search of like, why the hell do we actually make excuses in our life? Not even just specific to your fitness routine, not specific to the way you're choosing to eat, following a diet, not following a diet, just in general, what is the psychology behind that? And so much of what I read had to do with the fact that we do it out of self-preservation, trying to maintain our self-confidence. And I thought that was so interesting because if you really think about it, making excuses is the exact reason why you don't have more confidence in being successful with something. It's a story. And this is exactly what I shared with our Fitness Fix clients this week. Most of our excuses are stories that we are telling ourselves that we inherently believe to be true. And as we continue to make these excuses, as we continue to perpetuate this cycle of excuses, we're only making those stories our reality. And if we make those stories our reality, it is going to be the biggest roadblock. You are going to be the biggest roadblock 
to getting to where you want to go. So what the heck should we do about it? Well, I am going to share three tips as it relates to fitness and nutrition that honestly help you reframe and help you reconsider how to think about what some of those roadblocks are for you and those excuses that you tend to make. So I can sit here and probably come up with a list and have half of this episode be all about the different excuses that people actually come up with. I'll throw out a few. One of the biggest ones I hear from people is some version of I am too busy and, or I do not have time. The more you tell yourself you do not have time and raising my hand in total vulnerability and saying that this is something that I'm very guilty of doing on a regular basis. I will put off my workout because something comes up for this business, for our clients, even just trying to squeeze in time to record these podcast episodes sometimes that I do not stick to my commitment of getting my workouts in. My nutrition coach knows that it's something we talk about on a regular basis. And I have started to tell myself this story that I am too busy. So how the heck do we reframe that? Pretty simple, honestly. Saying to yourself that getting a workout, period, even if it's shorter, even if it's 20 minutes, even if it's 25 minutes, is better than no work at all. As somebody who has gone through periods in their life where I was able to go into the gym for a good hour, feel like I could get through a whole mobility warm up and do multiple different sets to hit lower body and upper body multiple days a week. I told myself this story that if I did not have a true hour and a half to carve out time for that workout, it was not worth it for me to hit that workout at all. It's taken me a few months. It's taken me a lot of conversations with the support of a coach and just honestly talking through out loud, how ridiculous it sounds to say that my workout has to be X amount of time to just be like, Hey, why not hit three different exercises that focus on your lower body? Let's just stick with that example. Quads, glutes, hamstrings, three exercises, three sets of each of those exercises, giving yourself a break in between so that you can really push the weight that you're using and get out of the gym. Just having someone remind me that it is okay to do that and then to actually show up and freaking do it to the point where I then see results from that has completely changed my relationship to fitness because at one point I felt like a, it was a little bit of a drag. Even as somebody who loves exercise, I would have to hype myself up to get into the gym and really feel like, hey, I need to put in this time because I just couldn't feel good about it. I would start to get distracted. I'd look at my phone, client messages would be coming in. I'd start thinking about all the other things that I needed to get done that day to the point where I didn't feel like my head was in my workout. Now, I almost make it like a little game with myself that I purposely actually restrict that time window to say, okay, I have exactly 45 minutes. I kind of bookend appointments or other meetings or tasks that I want to complete when I'm blocking my calendar. So that it really forces me to put my head down and just do the work, the physical activity in the gym in that time. Now I'm going to take the same one because I think it's such a big excuse that it deserves a nutrition perspective too of how I see this with clients and potential clients and people messaging me about things they struggle with all the time when it comes to food. You feel like you're too busy to meal prep and you're looking for more convenient food items, which often tend to be not as healthy. And if you're somebody who's been around here for a minute, you know our perspective on this, there's no food that's inherently good or bad. But if let's say we had the option to choose between pizza or protein sources like chicken, beef, turkey, and tuna, yes, there is more value from those protein sources. I have done a few polls on my Instagram stories in the last two, three weeks or so, especially around the summertime where people are on the road, they're traveling more, they're going to the beach and they feel like they're sitting on the beach all day. They just want to have something to grab that they feel like they cannot come up with protein options that are grab and go or fast. That is a choice and it's simply because you are thinking about it the wrong way. I heard this from a nutrition coach years back when I first started, I didn't even have my own nutrition certification at this time. I first started as a client and this person said, anything can be quick if you choose to prep it that way. And it's like such a duh kind of moment because all you need to do to make something quick is one put it in a container that makes it portable or at least convenient, right? And two, 
look at food options that might already even be pre-made. We have a joke inside of the fitness fix community where one of my assistant coaches, Kara, shout out to Kara. She loves to call a lot of her meal prep semi-homemade. And the reason why we call it semi-homemade is because yes, there's whole food sources in there. She might be throwing in some veggies, some fruit, depending on if it's a dinner or snack, whatever it is that she's cutting those things up, cooking them a little bit, but it's semi homemade because then she's throwing in different freezer items from Trader Joe's, like a staple in my own household is the Trader Joe's frozen brown rice that you legit pop in the microwave. It takes less than three minutes to cook. I also couple that with their rosemary and balsamic grilled chicken that's already marinated, it's already cooked. All you need to do to actually prepare it is remove the plastic seal on top and cut it. That's it. That's just as fast as the pizza that you're grabbing for. That's just as fast as the protein bar that you might be grabbing for, which has a time and place, but is it superior to a whole food source like that chicken? Not necessarily, especially if you feel like you're not getting to where you want to go consistently choosing the protein consistently choosing the slice of pizza at a convenience. It's truly just a matter of shifting your perspective. I enjoy food and I wish I had more time to cook because I do actually like cooking, but half the time when I'm in the kitchen cooking, I'm thinking about other things I'm trying to get done. I might even be multitasking. I'm watching a Zoom video, listening to a podcast, trying to accomplish something else at the same time. So I'm always looking for those life hacks and those ways to just be a little bit more efficient and a little bit faster in that regard. So if you are looking for somebody to spitball some ideas and brainstorm some ideas around faster meal prep options. We are the place for you. And we also have a guide. If you are listening to this episode live, when it comes out on June 22nd, then it is actually coming your way this weekend. So long as you subscribe to our email list. So if you want to get on our email list, shoot me a DM. I've got my Instagram linked down in the show notes, and we will make sure you get a copy of that guide to help you through the summer. Now, other excuses that we came up with when we were discussing this with our current one-on-one clients, a big one for a lot of people was other people and feeling like you're relying on other people or other people's schedules, especially for our mom friends out there. You feel like you're being pulled in a lot of different directions. Your kids' schedules change in the summer, and maybe that prevents you from having that time that you normally did when they were at school, if they're not going to camp, or you want to do more activities with them. Don't make it about other people. Make it about you. Can you pull those other people into those activities? Yes. The client that brought this up to me, she sent me a text today and she said she finds herself often not necessarily having that drive to go to the gym if a friend of hers doesn't want to go with her, but that's not going to help her get to where she wants to go. And the if sometimes she doesn't want to go to the gym because she feels a little uncomfortable, not super confident to walk into the gym by herself in the main gym area where all the weights are and she's navigating using different pieces of equipment, She's never going to get there if she doesn't actually just walk in the door solo and go for it. It's just a matter of getting her reps in, but it's really easy for us to justify. Again, go back to these stories where we're telling ourselves, oh, it's not convenient for this reason because I'm worried about this other person, or I have to go pick up this person here or there. And I just, again, then it turns into the next excuse that we just described of not having enough time. So you can see how these all kind of roll one into the next, into the next. Other excuses. Another big one that a lot of people tend to share is seasons in their life, like the summer, when we're more social, when we have more plans after work or on the weekends, or you're sitting on the beach. I find with a lot of clients that they actually don't eat enough food in this time. I've even had clients say to me, when it's hotter out, they just don't have as much of an appetite. Totally valid. Can't we look for other things to eat? Can't we look for making the protein shake? That is quick. It's portable. It also is cold. Put some ice in it. And then there you go. Killing three birds with one stone, just like that. All of these examples just highlight how easy it is for us to think one way and then continue to think that way to the point where you are getting in your own way of getting to where you want to go. And that's the main message here. Excuses are never going to just completely stop. If that were the case, 
then it'd be really, really easy to achieve all of the goals that you wanted to. But if you want to put your excuses and push them to the side, I should say, we have to shift our perspective. If you struggle with trying to shift your perspective, that's where the support of a coach, of a community, of being around other people who are like, hey, I see you, I hear you, I totally identify with that. And here are some of the ways that I've been able to work through it. Here are some of the actual steps that I've taken to be able to make those changes in my life. If that's important to you, you are probably listening to this podcast all the way through the end, right? If you didn't care, you wouldn't have even tuned into the show. You could have stopped it after the first two, three minutes and been like, oh, my excuse is I don't really want to hear this shit because I feel called out. But guess what? If you feel called out, that's a good thing. If you feel called out, That means that you recognize that you need to make a change. Maybe you're not totally ready to make the complete change. Maybe you're not totally ready to make the 180. That's another thing that people tend to do too, that I think kind of falls in that same bucket of, oh, I have to get this full workout, this full time for my workout. And it has to be the hour. It has to be the hour and a half, whatever it is. I think that's kind of similar, but the way this showed up in our client call that we had about this topic was chasing perfection and saying, well, if I'm not doing every single thing right, like every last little thing, every decision, every meal, every workout, every night's sleep, then I just shouldn't do it at all. Life doesn't work like that. So you're setting yourself up for failure. You're setting yourself up to feel like none of this is possible if that is your perspective. So again, if you struggle to shift that perspective, Why not get around people? Why not be a part of a community that can make it a little bit easier? Why not have a coach in your corner who is there to just challenge you and shift your perspective a little bit? A lot of this conversation in even in the client setting was prompted by a bunch of messages I was going back and forth with a current client on. And I know she listens to this show and she had said to me, she's like, I'm probably annoying you. And I'm like, you're not because this is the exact point of coaching. The fact that we're even having this conversation right now shows me that you want to make progress. And I'm here to challenge you to try to push you to see that the thoughts that you're having are interfering with the decisions that you need to make to help you actually step into the person that you want to become. And that led us to an even bigger conversation about how do we really measure our success on a day-to-day basis in terms of making decisions that truly align with the person that we want to be, even though we're not that person yet making decisions that are in line with the person we are trying to become. That is a lifelong process. That isn't going to happen in six months time by going through a program like the fitness fix. You are going to make massive strides towards that, but other circumstances change in your life that will test your ability to remain aligned. And aligned doesn't mean you have to be perfect, but it does help you stay driven and disciplined. Notice that I didn't use the word motivation to get to where you want to go. And it's okay for you to have stops and starts there. But if you have a system and you have tools to rely on with the support of a coach, of a community, whatever it is, it's that much easier to be able to take a step back and ask yourself, am I getting my own way? Am I doing something or telling myself something that's preventing me from where I want to go, that's convincing me that this is impossible, even though I really, really want it really bad. Anytime you ask yourself if you want something really bad, the next thing to do is to audit the decisions you make. If you really want something that bad, if you really want to lose the 10 pounds, if you really want to fit in a certain dress size, can you say no to a drink? Can you choose the chicken instead of the pizza? doesn't have to be all the time, but there will be periods, especially when you want a certain outcome in a specific timeline that you do have to make those choices. And you're going to be tested a lot. You're going to be tested in seasons like the summer. I know that's how I feel, but how do I balance out continuing to move forward? I'm honest with myself about the outcome every week. I'm honest with myself about my expectations. I don't allow myself to be frustrated when I take a step back and I look at my own food tracker and I look at how many workouts I did or didn't hit. And I objectively say, I don't necessarily expect to make progress this week. Do I still have the moments where I might be going into my closet and I'm trying to put on a certain dress and like, I don't really love how this looks. Yeah. But that's kind of like my 
snapback moment, that light bulb that goes off for me that says, Hey, this is the reason that we do want to get that workout in. This is the reason that we do want to make time to prep a few more of our ingredients so that we can just grab them. This is the reason that we want to get to bed a little bit earlier because all of those micro decisions, all of those day-to-day decisions stack up to help you lead the life that you desire and move away from those excuses. Make those excuses a little less loud. Make those voices in your head that are trying to pull you in the direction that is not the direction you actually want to go a little less of a tug, a little less strong. So if you're listening to this and you're asking yourself, what excuses do I have? Start questioning. What stories are you telling yourself? What are things that you really, really believe they don't really want to believe because it's not who you want to be. We don't take enough time to reflect. We just sit more in the frustration and then we don't always do something about it. So if you want to do something about it, let this podcast be your first sign to do something. And it can be something really small. It can be, if you're listening to this on a walk, like I mentioned when we first opened up this episode, walk for five minutes longer. Or tell yourself, hey, I wasn't going to go to the gym this weekend, but I am going to make it to a point to go to the gym on Saturday. Maybe you never go to the gym on Saturday. Take that one step. See what happens. And then the next time you're tested with that excuse, with that thought popping into your mind of like, oh, well, the pizza sounds a little bit easier. Ask yourself, did I do what I needed to, to reduce the friction? Is the chicken sitting there in the fridge so that it's technically just as easy as the pizza, if not easier, because you don't even have to pick up the phone or get in your car to order it or pick it up. Perspective. That's all I got for you guys for today's episode. If you liked it, share it, send it to a friend, text them if you think it'll make a difference in their life. But as I mentioned at the top of the show, really, really, really appreciate reviews Always appreciate your guys' feedback. If there are other topics that you want to hear about as we move through these summer months, my DMs are open. I want to hear from you. We want to make sure this podcast is bringing direct value and action steps that you can take every single week to lead that healthier lifestyle. And if you need more support, the Fitness Fix is accepting new clients. Our group coaching program is off to a great start, but that doesn't mean you can't join our one-on-one program. So if you want to join me and coach Alyssa, coach Kara is going to take a little maternity leave in the next few weeks. We're super excited for the growing fitness fix family, but she will be back with us very soon. But if you want to join us, we've got space on our rosters and we're here to support you. We're here to welcome you into this incredible community and let's get out of our own way. Let's stop making those excuses. So from wherever you're listening from, as always, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.